Legend of Galactic Heroes episodes. Mm, not an episode. We're watching the movie. Uh, the movie is like an hour and a half long. So I'm going to be watching the first half of the movie. When I get to a point that is around the half mark, I will pause it at a time that seems good. Everyone says that you should watch the movie instead of the first three episodes, the first four episodes or so, uh, because it does a better job introducing the characters and telling you about them and blah 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 blah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to watch the first half of the movie for Legend of Galactic Heroes. Let's go. Okay, we start off in space, which is always a good start. So the Secretary of State and some dude are talking about this other dude who's about 20 years old and he's going to inherit all this stuff. Um, <clears throat> so he's young and um, he is going to get this prestigious title. So I don't know if this is like our world. If it is, then we've like regressed back to like the, the frilly collars and the po low ponytails for adult men. <laughs> and there's these other two guys, a blonde guy kind of a wormy looking black haired guy. Um, and they're returning home from their space mission. Now we're back with the first two guys, or maybe it's one of the first two guys and a different guy, and they're talking about all these different guys and marrying the the princess or the whatever, and it's all very um, throwing a lot of stuff at us at once. Now we have some ladies. They're so pretty. I wish I lived in a time where I could wear a dress like that and I wouldn't be looked at like a weirdo. Her little brother must be the blonde guy. There's Reinhard, there's a Sieg. They're very German-esque. That's what I'm seeing, that's what I'm sensing. Wait, this might be a different blonde guy than the blonde guy we already met. He is definitely, he's prettier than his sister, I'd say. The fleet is returning home. That is just about the gist of the plot we've experienced so far. They kind of rapid fire introduced a bunch of characters and that's about all so far besides the returning home part. A bunch of soldiers are getting off a plane. There's this one guy, Yang, who got a little bit of attention. There's a group of three, Yap, Attenborough, and Yang. Um, or not Yap, did I say Yap? It's Lap. And oh, they're looking for Jessica! I can't really follow all- there's just so much being introduced right now. Lap is gonna marry Jessica! Oh, and Yang is surprised! I don't- is Jessica his sister or something? Or maybe Yang also has a crush on Jessica, and they're two friends and they know that. Oh, this must be Jessica. Jessica totally wanted to say hi to Yang, but then Yang's like, Go ahead, Lap. She's yours. But, oh, Yang is totally disappointed. We don't get to hear the actual conversation that takes place, but he totally proposed to her, and then Jessica looked over at uh, Yang, and then he was like, do it. And now they're like, yay, we're getting married! Sort of, I mean, well, Lap is excited, but Jessica and Yang are like, <laughs> Then the three go out to party, and uh, drink wine and be merry. Jeez, I could fill in whatever dialogue I wanted for these guys. Like, for all I know, she just proposed a threesome. But no, she proposed something which Lap agrees. Oh, I guess maybe Jessica wants to dance with him, wants to dance with Yang. And he's like, is it okay? And Lap is like, totally! And they dance and Yang steps on her toes and it's adorable because he's so clumsy. Oh, but Jessica's crying. She doesn't want to marry Lap. She wants to marry Yang! Anyway, now they have to carry Yang, uh, Lap home because he got blasted. Jessica and Lap go home, and uh, Yang takes himself to the after party, a bar, to drink away his sorrows. <laughs> Meanwhile, back with those other guys that um, are less difficult to distinguish their names. I'm pretty sure that the pretty blonde guy is Reinhard, and the guy next to him must be Sieg, I think. Reinhard is annoyed with how, like, Renaissance style everything is, but he really just wants to see Lady Anna Rose. Lady Anna Rose is that blonde girl. I, I totally guessed that they were siblings, and um, yeah, she's uh, she's very happy to see him because he's been away in space. Goodness gracious, another character, Julian. So he might be Yang's um, roommate or something. <laughs> I wonder if they keep going back and forth between these two groups just to show off the different ways that they live, because like meanwhile with the rich guys, they're like having cake by the beautiful pond while, like, Yang is hung over in, in, like, a little trailer. And then every so often, we cut to these, to this guy, 
with the ponytail in a dark room chatting with someone about something that irritates him. So once Yang finally gets out of bed, he calls uh, his commanding officer back. And he's like, oh, there's gonna be a ceremony where they're gonna thank everyone for their great work in outer space. Reinhardt and his little friend, I'm calling him C until I'm told otherwise, <clears throat> um, are leaving his sister's house, I guess. And he's like irritated because he thinks that she's basically imprisoned there and he wants to rescue her. And Yang is talking to some higher up about like his strategies of winning war. And the guy seems impressed. He seems to think that wars are won through strategies and where you place your guys regardless of their strength. Um, if your strategy is equal to that of your opponent, then it doesn't matter how strong your soldiers are, you will have an equal outcome. Whoever's strategy is better wins. Hmm, that guy kind of walked away looking disappointed. He is at first interested and then he walks away. Yang desperately just wants to retire. That's the real answer to the question. Oh no, this guy's name is something different. Kier here? What was it? What did you call him? Kier Hikes. Oh, I don't know what that is. How do you pronounce that? Not in a Japanese accent. Wait, okay, so he really is named Sieg. I'm gonna call him Sieg. Yeah, alright, so that's his first name versus his last name. Blah blah blah. Okay. Uh, Reinhard wants all the promotions for his sister's sake. And, um,. She doesn't want him to get promotions because she thinks that he's seeking far too much. And so uh, Anna Rose says to Sieg to help him calm down, but Sieg maybe also wants to save Anna Rose by helping Reinhardt get more promotions? <laughs> maybe? I think all of these old dudes who keep talking in the shadows are like trying to manipulate Reinhardt and the situation around Reinhardt to continue promoting him. The higher-ups are separating Reinhard from all of his trusted captains in order to test him, or maybe in order to try to get him to die in battle. The only one who wasn't transferred was Seek. Yay! Friends forever! Whoa, this guy's mustache and hair do not match. His voice matches him even less. I don't know, these guys are talking about all his personnel changes and this guy, Stadin, who was like, he's gonna do awesome, but is he? Maybe, maybe not. Most of the conversations seem to be about this. A battle is definitely being orchestrated. And all sides of the battle are, um, are, are being kind of manipulative, I feel. Like, it's not legit what's going on. So it looks like Yang's words got him in trouble when he was talking about his personal strategy um, to win wars. They're sending out a bunch of troops to fight in this battle, which has been clearly deviously orchestrated. Um, and Lap is going to be one of the guys who has to go out um, to the front lines. Oh, okay, so now we know who Julian is. He's not his roommate. He's like a little 14-year-old kid who was um, whose parents were killed in battle. I don't know why he's living with Yang. Uh, maybe, like. I don't know, maybe to help him grow as a soldier since he wants to become a soldier. I don't know. But uh, Yang wants him to become a cook or become something not related to soldiers. Is evil ponytail guy the king? Or what, someone who sits on a throne? Oh, that's a twist. Reinhardt is before him um, and talking about promotions and stuff, and he's like, well, maybe I should make you a marquee, or a count or something, and of course, Reinhardt wants to be the highest thing there is, but he's like, oh no, anything, anything's fine, I don't care, whatever. <laughs> Kaiser tells him to settle down and just become a count and then see what happens. And now we're in space! That happened so quickly. <laughs> he like teleported there. <laughs> All the soldiers are saying goodbye to their loved ones and they're heading off to war. This guy has a baby and then this guy, his elderly parents are adjusting. Oh, this guy's got a pregnant wife and oh, war is awful. It, like all of these guys, like if I'm interpreting what the old people in the, in the darkness are discussing, all these guys are being sacrificed basically. Lap and Yang are saying goodbye to Julian and um... Jessica. Um, 
I'm pretty sure Lap is gonna die, which is a bummer. But, I mean, it's a bummer because he's a nice guy, but it'd be good for Yang, then he can have Jessica. The two of them shake hands, Lap and Yang, and they're like, let's both come back alive. See you after the war. Bye. Oh, and the screen pauses on both of them and turns them all like into a sketch drawing and... <laughs> Poor Lap. He's not long for this world. You know what? And I'm going to stop it there. That's 40 minutes in. Uh, it's pretty close to being halfway through the movie. And uh, we'll, we'll watch the second half of the movie in the next watching. Um, and after the movie's over, I'll decide whether or not to watch the actual series. Um, so that would be the end of, obviously, this watching of Legend of Galactic Heroes. And I would have to say it seems very interesting. Um, there's a lot of tropes in it that I've seen a hundred times before, not only in anime, but in movies in general. Um, and, you know, that's not the show's fault. The show was, like, made forever ago. Well, like, 30 years ago. <laughs> around. I'm not exactly sure when it first came out, but it's an older show, so maybe that might be an explanation for why it is using all these tropes. Because, you know, they weren't overused back then when they used them. Um, all around, I think it's a very interesting show. Um, the stuff that's going in, going on in it is very interesting, I definitely have to say. Um, I'm a obviously a little bit confused about uh, exactly what is going on behind the scenes. Like, when, once they start talking about war and politics, I'm like, I don't get it! But when they're talking about, like, oh, poor Lap and Yang, blah blah blah, then it's easier to follow. I imagine it's going to become a lot easier to follow once things start playing out. And um, it almost seems like it's setting up for a time skip or something. I don't know, maybe like two years when Julian is old enough to join the army. I don't know. We'll see. But that's all for this watching of Legend of Galactic Heroes. I'll see you next time for the second half of the movie where I will decide whether or not I'm going to watch the entirety of the show. Bye!